Hello, Salesforce family. Walters954 going over the platform developer summer 19. What's new? All right. Number one is manipulating complex internet data inflows without code using Apex defined data types. One, that's a mouthful. Two, this is some really interesting stuff using flows. I'm always a really big fan of flows. The less code I have to write is great. And as a development wizard, I love to empower my admins to be able to get stuff done. Basically, this is for web callouts, and it really helps out with structuring your data so that it can be used in flow pretty easily. What you do is define an Apex class, so there technically is code, into a specific pattern or interface that your flow can understand. This works really well with REST APIs and complex data that's coming in because before we could only use primitive types, but now we can structure our data the way that we want and actually absorb it into flow without having to write a full Apex class to integrate the data. Take a look at these two blog posts. One, if you don't know about unofficial Salesforce, check them out. But two, there's a really good write up on how it works. There's also videos and you know that I'm a fan of that. All right, so next up on our list, making long running callouts with continuation. So admittedly, I am not too familiar with continuation. I'm definitely gonna be making some more videos on the continuation class to familiarize myself with it. The new update here is that Aura and Lightning Web Components now have access to the continuation class. Once your message is returned, you can call a different method, one that you set up in the continuation function to continue your code. Some key notes here is that you cannot perform DML once a continuation function is out. That's because your process is running asynchronously. Once it comes back in, your data should not be changed or bad things could happen if your data was changed. Once again, I encourage you to check out the resources down here to review the continuation function. Also subscribe because I'm definitely going to be making some videos about this pretty soon. Configuring your components for different device sizes. This is really cool and something that was needed this is out for Aura and Lightning Web Components, and this one was quick to get done, so I can show you guys a demo of that. Let's go over here to our Tower application, and we will open up our pages. And we can see here that my Hello World Lightning Web Component says that it is not supported in this form factor. If we change our screen to a different form factor, we can see once the page loads that my hello world component is actually showing. You go back to desktop mode, and there you go, it is unsupported again. Let's jump into the code and I'll show you how to configure the different device sizes. For Lightning Web Components, this will be done in the meta.xml file. For Aura, you'll need to update your design file. Set the type to small for smaller devices like tablets and phones, large for computer displays and laptops. It is in the metadata.xml for Lightning Web Components. You're gonna add in its additional tags for any of your targets. You're going to be adding target config if you don't have it already, and then the supported form factors. An additional note here, uh, something that I figured out while I was learning this, I'm gonna deploy really quickly and we're going to get an error down here saying that we can't change the form factor until we remove our component from our previous pages. So let's do that really quick. Move it from here, save. Go back to Visual Studio, deploy that. Looks like it deployed successfully. Let's make sure to refresh our page. Put our e-bike back in. So we should be supported in large formats, but if we switch to tablets, we see that it is not supported. So that's working out great. All right. Using Lightning Web Components in Visual Force pages, I can see how this can be useful in some legacy code that's gonna be updated. We need to make sure to add in the property Apex Include Lightning. We have to create a standalone Aura app and then write a quick JavaScript function to actually create that component. This one wasn't too bad either. So this is the page we want to manipulate. The first step they said was to add that Apex include lightning into our page. Let's save that. 
It's not going to deploy yet. Then create a standalone application. I have the skeleton right here. Let me go ahead and deploy this while I go back into our DreamHouse Visual Force page. We need somewhere to inject our Lightning Web component into the Visual Force page. So let's add a div with the ID of Lightning. Now we need to write the JavaScript that's going to inject that into the DOM. Looking over this very quickly, we are going to use our Lightning script calling our standalone application. Our standalone application is going to create the component Hello World, which is referenced in here. Next, if we wanted to, we can pass in some parameters. We are selecting the div that we want to inject this into. And finally, a callback function to say how everything went. Looks like everything went well. There's our Lightning Web Component. Last up, we have a little bit more control over our platform caching on our Scratch orgs. All you have to do is add in platform cache to your Scratch org definition file to define how much you want to allocate. Really cool for those of us who are using Scratch orgs actively. You guys should be able to answer the questions down below. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Go out there and share this with some other development wizards. And remember that I believe in you.